My name is Sean McCafferty from Arizona Eye Consultants and Intour Technologies. My talk will present the methodology for optimizing a deformable interface accommodating intraocular lens. From concept to first order design to a best guess prototype to the mathematical model verified by the prototype and subsequently to an iterative optimizing process using the dimensional, mechanical, and optical properties of the model to produce an optimized design. The two main output metrics in this case are minimization of the actuation force required to alter the focal distance of the lens and maximization of the optical quality of the image measured by a visual strail ratio. Design concepts shown in intraocular configuration here based upon the in vivo proven new lens concept where zonular tension creates an anterior vectored force to extrude a gel through a circular aperture creating a lenticular deformation directly proportional to the force applied. This design, however, reverses the feedback by using a bicameral chamber with a high refractive uh, index fluid in the anterior chamber. Therefore, when the zonular tension extrudes the gel through the aperture, it reduces the power of the lens, allowing for distance focus, just like our natural physiologic accommodative process. We developed a best guess prototype based upon our first order design. We desire to focus on the retina, three diopters of accommodation, actuation force of less than three grams, and to fit within the physical constraints of the eye. The actual lens prototype showing the outer lens shell and the inner extrusion aperture of three millimeters, which you can see centrally. In this case, you can see the image target of the deformable interface accommodating IOL in a testing cell. Alternative image targets, both at three millimeters and 15 centimeters, showing the accommodation of the lens prototype actuated by a pressure alternating between zero and three grams. We now have a concept, first order design, and a working prototype. The image quality of the prototype was measured by a Mauveschan contrast sensitivity corrected optical transfer function, from which the visual strail ratio was calculated. This is a singular value that describes the optical quality of the image produced on the retina. A well-corrected lens has a visual strail ratio of about 0.8. We now have a concept, a first order design, a best guess working prototype. Now we develop a mathematical model of the lens, which will be verified by the prototype. Since the lens utilizes mechanical deformation, a model incorporates finite element analysis to produce a deformation of the accommodating refractive surface. The finite element analysis model provides us with a deformed refractive interface, here shown as having some oblate asphericity. Next, we verify the model with the prototype. Here is shown the model predicted in prototype accommodative change with applied pressure, which correlate fairly well. The actuation pressure is our first output metric. We then verify the contour of the interface, which is the refracting accommodative surface with the prototype and again show good correlation be between the prototype and the model, mathematical model. This slide illustrates that if careful attention is not paid to the design parameters, a nice refracted deformed surface, which you can see by some of the, the curves along the bottom, quickly degenerate into an aberration producing machine. What we're showing here is the actual uh, radial surface of the uh, deformable accommodating surface interface uh, as it increases in diameter. And obviously you get some rippling effect as the diameter gets out close to uh, two millimeters four millimeter diameter total, sorry, two millimeter radius. We then use the deformed interface to propagate an aberrated wavefront image to the retina using standard Fourier techniques. The model is then able to produce a contrast sensitivity corrected optical transfer function at the retina 
and a subsequent visual Strel ratio, which is our second output matrix. We then literally run thousands of iterations to produce functions relating the input parameters of dimensional analysis, mechanical properties, and optical properties of the design to our output measure of actuation force and visual quality measured by the Strail ratio. Shown here are two such functions. Looking at the gel thickness versus the amount of force that's required, and looking at the visual Strail ratio with respect to a ratio of the gel thickness to aperture radius. We can now optimize our design relating optical, dimensional, and mechanical design parameters to the output metrics. We found that maximizing the ratio of the actual gel thickness to aperture diameter of the extruded area optimized the design. In addition, maximizing the refractive index change at the extruded uh, interface optimized the design. Poisson's ratio of the gel material should be minimized. The elastic Young's modulus and the total disk area to be compressed have the greatest effect on the force requirement. And lastly, we use a root sum square merit function Monte Carlo simulation for the multiple dependent variables. Ultimately, we have a myriad of interdependent design parameters that will all affect the outcome metrics. These can be optimized together by using the Monte Carlo simulation and root sum squared merit functions, which are the output metrics. This gives us exact answers on the dimensions, optical, and mechanical properties of the design. The bottom line is that the design methodology is universal to any deformable interface accommodating intraocular lens and must be used prior to development or animal or first-in-man trials.